Hello, hello! It's time once again for 30 minutes of Japanese flavor. This is the J1 League Goal Zone, and we have nothing short of goals to kickstart your week. So let's waste no time and get to the action. Some rescheduled fixtures over the week. Tokushima handed Cerezo their first home defeat of the campaign. And the first goal for Gamba came with their first win of the season. Both Kawasaki and Nagoya kept up their winning ways, three points each, staying at the top. Back to regular programming for round 10, a battle in the cellar between Yokohama and Vigulta, both sides still on the hunt for their first victory. The leaders stayed home to play San Frecce while Nagoya had Sagan for company at the Toyota Stadium. The Marinos continued their unbeaten run and made it seven matches without defeat, with an only loss coming on opening day. They'd be optimistic about extending that run as they travelled to Sapporo, with the hosts managing just one win in their last seven. Ishizanha. Good ball in! Oh, what a save that is! How on earth! Did Takanori Sugeno get on the end of that? Chibara gets in on the action. Elbert will struggle to get there. He does manage to get a cross in. Ado Naiwu isn't quite quick enough. Oh, deflection onto the crossbar from Matsubara shot. It is. It's great touch on. Challenge him surely. Is he going to be unselfish? Oh, that is a poor miss. Anderson Lopez, the top scorer of the J-League, has missed an open goal. What right across the face of the goal, still alive here, it should go in, Anderson Lopez, a bit of a scramble, poor defending at the back for Yokohama F. Marinos. And they get the opening goal, and I think, tell you what, it's not just delight there for Anderson Lopez, there will be some relief as well after missing a very easy chance right at the end of the first half but at the beginning of the second he makes amends first of the ball there might have been a high boot on him as well that's not going to matter flicked across by Miyazawa good work from Kim Minte and Anderson Lopez puts on the finishing touch it's a bit of a desperate punch on the leg there from Hatanaka he wanted it more didn't he That's a decent ball, a shot, it's tipped away by Sugeno. That's an open chance again, what a save there by Sugeno. How on earth did that not go in? Great ball in, and finally, Ado Anaiwu gets the goal that has eluded this side. Ghosting in, good work from Junamano. Lovely ball, just come on. It's guided in beautifully. Outside of his boot as well, Junamano. It's a good goal. That was actually one of the harder chances today that they've had. See how many others were far easier than that one. But they have deserved something, I think. It's fair to say. Mizunuma, teasing ball in, oh brilliant, Dyson Maeda has turned this game around in the space of two minutes, Yokama Marinos has scored a couple of goals, that's a beautiful delivery and a fantastic header from another man in form, what a ball in from Dyson Maeda, from Kota Mizunuma for Dyson Maeda to put away and the substitutes have had an impact. First Junabano and then Kota Mizunuma with their deliveries. A well-placed header. And it's all gone quite wrong for Sapporo, but very right for Ange Postecoglou and Marinos. Open goal and it has gone in this time. They've missed a few of those type of opportunities. And Elbert 
makes no mistake right at the end of this game. Are they going to scratch it off? They have to look at it, surely. Well, it's quite obvious there was a hand in there. Oh, maybe not. I'll tell you what, wasn't that off the armpit? From the front angle, it's not handball. It looks like it comes off his chest and then perhaps his armpit. First time I did think it was. Oh, he said it's a handball. Which means, in that case, we are going to have maybe another two minutes to go. Here's Mizunuma. Have a bit of an overlap here. Albert. Is he still going to score? He does this time. Oh, oh, what a great goal that is. It's even better than the first one, which he was denied. Doesn't matter about the one that was chalked off. How about this instead? Says Albert. Give it another shot at it, and he doesn't make a mistake this time. Look at that, rifles out to the roof of the net. And we've also just heard the final whistle. It's a great, great strike. And that is it. We've had the end of the game. The whistle went as we were looking at the replay of the goal. And Hokkaido Consolo de Sapporo will be really disappointed. They did so well at the start, but three late goals from Yokohama F. Marinos turn it all around. The final score here, Hokkaido Consolo de Sapporo 1, Yokohama F. Marinos 3. The other Yokohama side would be hoping to emulate their city rivals, still having found no luck in the hunt for their first victory. Their opponents for Galta were no better, sitting just above them in the table and similarly winless. Just three minutes in and a chance for Yokohama, a deft ball played into the box from the free kick. Yutaro Hakamata with the header, but easy pickings for Jakub Slowik. It got trickier for Slowik in the 17th minute. The ball pounded at him from short range and Hakamata gets his name on the score sheet. And Vigalta wouldn't be able to level the scores in the first half. Shuhei Akasaki seeing his header just glancing wide of the post. Indeed, they go two goals down just after the hour mark. Keijiro Ogawa's ball in and Kosuke Saito stooping to conquer. But some success for Vigalta with eight minutes left. Unmarked Takuma Nishimura heads home the corner. And then in the 91st minute, from a corner again, they found their equaliser. Kyohei Yoshino hanging around at the far post to stab the ball home. Vortis came into this one on the back of an impressive away win at Cerezo in midweek and saw them win four of their last five league contests. The visiting Antlers were still struggling to find consistency and could see themselves punished. Very early on and Koki Sugimori goes it alone for Vortis but his left foot shot easily gathered by Yuya Oki. Just after the half hour and a corner to the Antlers, Koki Machida rises high and that's 1-0 to the visitors. Just before half time and Kashima looking to go two up, but Kami Fukumoto with the double save to deny them. And he was in fine form in the second half, turning away Ueda's shot with his left hand. Looking to salvage something in time added on for stoppages, Yude Konishi from distance, but that's off target, and Kashima win this one by a goal to nil. Avispa and Tokyo came into this game on the back of defeats to the leaders Kawasaki. Both sides looking for a chance to propel themselves out of the mid-table pack. 16 minutes in and Adyalton using the outside of his boot to find Diego Oliveira. Masaki Murakami gets a hand to his effort though. And that one comes back off the post and away. Chance for the home team in the 37th minute. A deep cross finds Takeshi Kanamori who didn't quite seem set to receive it. 
Tokyo coming to the fore just before the break. A fine volley from Oliveira, but denied by Murakami again. The breakthrough came just before the hour. Takaaki Shishi advancing towards goal, ping-ponging around the box before Bruno Mendes makes it 1-0. Avispa looking to go two up here in the 76th minute. Fine save from Tsuyoshi Kodama. And his namesake Tsuyoshi Watanabe clears the follow-up off the line. One nil it remains. Three straight defeats without scoring for Oita heading into this fixture. And while Kashiwa took a win in their last game, both sides were still struggling at the bottom of the table. An important three points then if either side could rustle up some goals. An early breakthrough for Kashiwa sees Hiroku Goya with a nice layoff to Keiya Shihashi, his effort hitting the crossbar. Eight minutes into the second half and charging down Yuta Kamiya's shot, Awita's Keisuke Saka a judge to have handled the ball. Stepping up for the penalty is Kamiya, but he didn't really get hold of it. Saved by the goalkeeper, tapped home though by Ataru Isaka. Kashiwa looking to extend their lead in the 63rd minute. Kengo Kitazume with the cross. Goya gets his head to it. Saved at the near post though by Shun Takagi. 20 minutes later, a very attractive approach work by Oita. Seigo Kobayashi, though, couldn't match it with a decent finish. Deja vu in the 90th minute. Kashira's Takumi Kamijima are judged to have handled the ball. Penalty kick. So, with a chance for Oita to draw level, Kohei Isa steps up. Saved by Kim Seung Gyu, and they can't put the rebound away. We've arrived at the half time break. Stay with us for more highlights, though, as we check in on the top two teams when we come back. You're back with the J1 League Goal Zone. Plenty more football to come, so stay with us as we take you around the grounds of Japan. Shonan took the scalp of unbeaten San Frecce in the last round and extended their unbeaten run to five in all competitions. Running a tight ship at the back with only one goal conceded, they needed to continue that form as they hosted Kobe, who'd only lost once so far. Mark Richmond with your commentary. Sakai's lost possession of the ball, it's crossed right inside! It should have been the opening goal. Well, they all went flying in. Takahashi allowed to run a long way. Allowed to measure this cross! And almost finding the head of Machido. Masika, lovely touch by Masika! Still Masika! What a debut that would have been! He apologizes to his teammates for not crossing, but he had every right to take that shot on. Masika. Lovely cross inside to Furuhashi! We've seen him score before from those cheeky lobs. Masika. Drills the ball across, and that will be the last piece of action in a game that provided a lot of entertaining passages of play, but not much goal mouth action in this fixture today at the Lemon Gas Stadium in Hiratsuka. Final score, Shonan Belmare nil, Visar Kobe nil. Still undefeated, Kawasaki face San Frecce next. The visitors on back-to-back -back defeats. The leaders on an impressive run would be heavily favoured to take all three points from this one. And Kawasaki looked to start well. Just three minutes in, Kaoru Mitoma with a good run, but Leandro Damio couldn't quite complete the move. 
They continued the pressure. This is Kyohei Noborizato on the left-hand side. Kaisuke Osaka, though, saves well. But they did find a goal seven minutes before the break. Miki Yamane with the first shot here, saved by the goalkeeper. Very cool football, though, allows Akihiro Iyanaga to open the scoring. Early into the second half and Junior Santos rises high to get a header in that the goalkeeper just tipped over the bar. Looking for a second goal, 10 minutes into the second half, Nobrizato with the ball across the face of the goal. Mitoma pops up to put the ball across the line. But upon review, VAR ruled that Damian was interfering with play, sticking his leg out right in front of the goalkeeper. That meant San Frecce still had the opportunity to get something out of this game. So in the 65th minute, Junior Santos hits the post and it's bundled over the line with the follow-up. Tsukasa Morishima credited with the score. Looking for a late winner with two minutes left, Shunki Higashi has a speculative shot turned away by Jung Sung Ryong. Nine straight clean sheets for Nagoya, setting another goalkeeping record for Langerak in the process. Up against the Tosu side that had lost three of their last four, the home side would be confident in dealing their opponents another loss and keeping pace with Kawasaki. Here's Shazad Haq. Sokka wanted the ball down the line, he gets it. Gets a cross in! Oh, and that's a wonderful goal! Sakai forcing that cross in, and that header superbly placed by Daichi Hayashi. Well, they, out of nothing, that's a really first proper attack. You take away that ambitious shot from Sakai a minute earlier, and Hayashi continues his great streak. He's been having a good run in the J League. Look at this run. He wanted that, Sakai. He's not offside. Forced that cross in. It's a really good cross, and that header, the way it's been placed, by Hayashi, excellent work from both these players. Gets it in front there, rather too easily of Yuichi Maruyama, the Nagoya skipper. He's placed that perfectly, right in off the post. Got to clear their lines, and it's a really good shot. It's squeezed in, Sakai has got the second. Well, I thought Langerak had that covered. Clearly, he didn't. He'll be really annoyed with that. And it's a rather bemused look at the face of Massimo Ficadenti. They've conceded one all season. They've now conceded two in one game. Saka has shown a lot of determination and perseverance today. This didn't look like he was going anyway. Took the shot well. Oh, and that is poor. Poor from Langerak. He won't like seeing this again. Took a deflection, but that came straight to Langrak, and he's actually palmed that into the goal. Yeah, that is what you get with Sakai, showing really good perseverance. Oh, and they're not far away, Hayashi. Again, all because Sakai didn't give up. Yonemoto, good ball. Not a start. Pakatani trying to get the shot away. Pakatani does it now. The shot has taken a deflection along the way, and they pull one back. Finally, Inagaki, via a couple of deflections, has given Nagoya a lifeline, and a likely one because they just haven't threatened at all in this game. Only the fourth goal that they have conceded, Sagan Tosu, in this season. Just couldn't clear the lines here, no one's closing him down. I think that actually came off Higuchi in the end to take it past his goalkeeper. Yeah, it's a huge deflection, wasn't it? And this will give you a good idea of it. And that is it. Langerak clears the ball, but it's all over. The Goya Grampus came to this game as one of 
two teams to have not lost this season and with the best defensive record of only conceding one goal. Both of those streaks have ended. The final score here is Nagoya Grampus 1, Saga Tosu 2. A hard loss at home in midweek meant Cerezo came into this fixture on a three-game winless run. He now had to face an Urawa side that had found a good run in form lately. Winning their last three is Patrick Kinghorn. Kiyotaki, I think, here to try and get the flick on. Maybe even a live pass and Kiyotaki all together. Huge distance flicked on, and it comes to the head. Turning is Koizumi. Koizumi get this back. He's got a man over there on the right, but Koizumi putting like he wants to strike this. Koizumi! And finally, a meaningful effort on goal right on half time, parried away comfortably enough by Kim Jin Hyon. Across the city to Gamba and a chance to pick up more points following their first win in Saga, the hosts faced Shimitsu. The S Pulse were now winless in three and slowly sliding down the league table. On the 20 minute mark, the ball falls to Takashi Usami, who picks his spot not quite accurately enough. Another effort, four minutes before the break, this time from even further out, Yusuke Inaguchi saves it. On the stroke of half time, Thiago Santana showing us the good, the bad by snatching at his effort, and the ugly with that dreadful finish. Here we are in the 94th minute, still no goals. Gamba looking to steal the points. But they couldn't do anything about it. One point apiece in this one. Recap of the results for you then. The Marinos came back from a goal down to pull off an away win in Sapporo. Nothing to separate the bottom sides. Sendai with a fight back to force a share of the points in Yokohama. Tokyo fell to their second defeat in a row in Fukuoka and Nagoya's undefeated campaign ended with a 2-1 loss at the hands of Sagan. Kawasaki dropped points but still maintain their position at the top. A six-point gap now over Nagoya and the only team yet to lose in the league. Sagan did well to climb into third and have Cerezo keeping pace, both teams on 20 points. Another win for Ray Sol, and they move upwards into clearer air, while Oita, on their sixth straight loss, sit in 18th, with Vigalta and Yokohama occupying their usual spots right at the bottom. Both sides still without a win after two months. That's all the time we have for you today. 100 games to the good 
and plenty more to come during the rest of this season. Make sure you join us next time. My name's Steve Dawson. You're watching the J1 League Goal Zone.